Hi, this is Mr. V, and today's lesson is from the uh, Illustrative Mathematics six, Chapter 6 in Geometry, which is on coordinate geometry, and lesson number 7, Distances and Parabolas. And um, before we get going in this, I'd like to do some go over some of the homework from the previous night, and we'll start with this one. It says here to select all expressions that can be factored into a squared binomial. That is, which of these are perfect square trinomials? And you'll remember that if we were going to square it into, write it into a squared binomial, it would be in the form of x of plus a squared. This is the squared binomial. And if you were to multiply this out, you would get the perfect squared trinomial. So x squared plus 2a, x plus a squared where the middle term, the coefficient of the linear term, the coefficient of the x, is going to be 2a, and this would be a squared. So if this is 2a, then a would be 1, and 1 squared is 1. So this is one of them. Here we have 5. 5 is 2a, so a would be 5 halves. When you square 5 halves, you get 25 fourths. This is one of them. You have negative 10. When you take half of that, you get negative 5. Negative 5 squared is not 5. It's 25. So this is 1. Again, 5, which is half of 10, squared is 25. So this works. And then half of 20 is 10. 10 squared is not 40. So this does not work. We're asked to graph the circle and to find out if these points are on the circle or how far they are from the circle. So I'm going to graph the circle. It has a center of, this is in the form, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. My radius is going to be equal to 4, and my center is going to be at hk, which would be negative 1, 3. So if I go negative 1, 3, and I look up 4, 4 up, 4 to the right, 4 to the left, four down, I can draw my circle, something like this. And the question is, are these points going to be on it? So if you look at 2, 1, it looks like it's right here. It might be on the inside. I can see if this distance, the radius here is 4. And if this distance to my point 2, 1 is equal to a 4, then we're good. And we can find this distance by making it into a right right triangle. This is 2. This is 3. a squared plus b squared is c squared. So we have 2 squared plus 3 squared is equal to c squared. This is 9 plus 4 is 13. c would be equal to the square root of 13, which is not 4. The square root of 16 is 4. This is going to be less than 4. It's going to be between 3 and 4. So this point, because its radius is less than 4, and my radius is 4, it's going to be inside the circle. The point 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Um, how far is that from the, the circle? Let's see, 4, 1. Uh, if I were to draw a right triangle out of this, this is 4. And if I go one more over and two down, obviously this is not going to be inside the circle. This would be... Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2, 5 squared plus 2 squared. That's 5 squared plus 2 squared is equal to c squared. 25, 29. The square root of 29 is equal to my c value. And, of course, that's somewhere between 5 and 6. This is not going to be inside my circle. It will be on the outside. And the last one that we have is 3, 3. And, of course, this has a... a um, 3, 3. This has a it has a distance of th one two three four, and my radius is four, so this point is on the circle. This last one here. Um, last question from the homework. We're translating this. Triangle. I'm not going to even graph it. I'm just going to look at the translation rule. If I were multiplying both the x and the y by the same number, it would be a scale factor and it would be similar. 
if I'm if it's equal to one, if my scale factor is equal to one, so no, even if I put negative one x and and I switch the places x and y, that is still a rigid transformation that would be congruent. But here I'm multiplying the x the x's by one number and the y's by another. This is neither, so this would be neither. And now we look at today's lesson, which is again from Illustrative Mathematics, our textbook, the coordinate geometry unit six, and we're on chapter set. So lesson seven, distances and parabolas. By the end of the lesson, you will know that parabola is a set of points equidistant from a given point called the focus and a line called the directors. We had a notice and wonder at all these points, and a lot of people noticed and wondered different things that you can notice them too. What I wanted you to get out of this was that this makes a curve, and this curve is called a parabola. Maybe you've seen it before. Maybe you didn't know that the definition of a parabola is the set of points that are equidistant from a point, the focus, and a line, the directrix. So maybe these words come to mind when you think of this curve. Parabola, vertex, quadratic, x squared, um, y, let's see, axis of symmetry. There's going to be a, an axis here that makes this symmetrical on either side. And you should add this definition to your reference table. Into focus. So we look at these, and then we have the focus and the directrix. And what do you notice? Some people notice that when the focus is above the directrix, this opens up. When it's below the directrix, it opens down. Some people notice that the closer the focus is to the directrix, the narrower this gets. The wider it gets as you, as far as you, the farther away you get. Some people say narrow. Some people say thin. Some people say wider or fat. So opening up and opening down. Uh, in the final image, the directrix is on the x-axis and the focal point is 2, 2. Point P is on the parabola, it's plotted. What is the distance from P to the directrix? So the final image would be, uh, if I go back one, this one. And I think I have this on my whiteboard. Let's just see. Yeah, there it is. What is the distance from F to P? And we'll notice here, I could make this into a right triangle. It's going to be three wide and four long, and A squared plus B squared is C squared, which is that um, three squared plus four squared is equal to C squared. That's nine plus 16 is 25 is equal to C squared. So C is equal to five. Also notice that this distance here is five. This distance is the same as this distance. That is, a point on the curve, on the parabola, is equidistant, the same distance, from the focus, that's this point, and the directrix, which is this line. The distance from the line is going to be vertical like this. So, moving on. Um, here we had an applet that you could actually draw. Oh, this is an applet you can play with. And there are these same questions over to the side. So I can draw, drag X, and you can see F, this is the focus. If I move this down, you can see the farther away I go from the from the directrix, the blue line, the, the wider or fatter it gets. And the closer I get, the narrower it gets. In fact, it gets all the way narrow. If I go up to right up on the line, it'll actually be a vertical line. Then it'll start opening down. So that's actually one of the questions that will come up later. The synthesis for this activity, uh, that's to deepen your understanding of the role distances play. So this is equidistant from the vert, from the directrix. So instead of being 7.5, I'd have to subtract one. This would be 6.5. And this distance here, if you work it out, you can find out that this is actually 6.52. So we'll do that right now. And I'm doing this relatively quickly, but that's because you can play this back relatively quickly. This is going to be six and a half, or it's going to be 7.5 minus one. The whole thing is 7.5. This distance is one. This is 6.5. Now let's just see if this distance is also 6.5. In the y direction, I'm going up two and a half. And in the x direction, I'm going across six. So if I do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, I have 2.5 squared plus six squared is equal to c squared. And when you work this out, indeed, it is 6.5. So that shows you that this distance is the same as this. And that's the big idea today's lesson. Um, on point. 
So this image shows a parabola. Focus is 6, 4. The directrix is the x is equal, y is equal to 0, which is the x-axis. The point 11, 5 looks like it might be on the parabola. Determine if it really is and show your explanation. So if I were looking at this casually, I might say, oh, yeah, that's on, the, that's on there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look at it with the Pythagorean theorem in mind because it looks like it might be five, and this looks like it might be five, but this distance is five, and this distance is one. When I do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, I get five squared plus one squared is equal to c squared, or c is equal to the square root of 26, which is like a little bit more than five. It's just a, just a smidgen more than five. Um, Fourteen ten. Let's look at this point. Fourteen ten looks like it might be on the on the graph, and I can draw this right triangle as well. If it is, this would be ten. So if this is also ten, then we would be in business. And this is a six, eight, ten. If you recognize your Pythagorean triples, maybe you don't. So you have to go six squared plus eight squared. That's thirty six plus sixty four, which is a hundred, and the Square root of six of one hundred is equal to ten. So indeed, this distance is the same as this one. And this point is on the graph. This one is not on the graph. In general, how can you determine if it's on the x if the x y is on the parabola? Well, if my y distance to the vertex to the directrix is equivalent to the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, use of the hypotenuse, then we would say that it is on the, on the diagonal. And there is more here. If you want to do some more, this is, tells me when I move the focus down, what happens? And this gets narrower. When I move it all the way down, it actually becomes a line. That's something that we explored in this, in this applet on page 8. Um, the lesson synthesis. The goal of this was to make connections between points and distances in a plane. And specifically, we have this parabola. So if I use my pencil here, we have a negative 1, 3 at this point. And we have the directrix is equal to the line, y is equal to 1. And where does the graph go? It's going to start here, and it's going to go upward somehow. And that would be a sketch. Here's the image. How far is the point 3, 6? three, six, how far is this point from the vertex? It should be, this, sh this should be six, if I'm doing this correctly. And I don't know if I have this picture in my grid or not. Let's see, I can make a, make a picture of this. Put it on my whiteboard and we can look at it. So from here to the line one is one, two, three, four, five. This is five. And if I were to go up three and across four, this is a three, four, five right triangle. Three squared plus four squared, that's nine plus 16 is 25. This is five as well. So indeed, this is on my distance, and the distance is five. I could have just looked at this without doing the Pythagorean theorem, and we'll do some of that tomorrow. Okay. Another way of looking at these, these are all conic sections. We're going to see what the relationship is tomorrow between a parabola and a circle. We look at the at the actual der derivation of the formulas and what they what they mean. So for the cool down, we had a, this point. Where we, we wanted to image shows a point and a line, and I want to know if these points are equidistant from F and from the line. You'll find that one and two are, and number three is not as you work through them. So good luck.